here we have some of the museum's most important fossils. Um, and these are some bones from the dinosaur Scalidosaurus, uh, which was an iron herbivore, um, four or five meters in length, the biggest ones found. Um, and what we have here is a model of what, uh, what we used to think it looked like, uh, and a, a smaller commercially available model, which uh, is, is probably much more accurate. Um, what's really important about these uh, are some little bones here, um, and they're from a juvenile uh, specimen. And next to them is a monograph written by Sir Richard Owen. Uh, Sir Richard Owen, very famous, obviously, uh, you know, created the Natural History Museum in London, uh, a legendary anatomist as well. And this is a monograph describing these, these actual bones. And of course, Richard is very important. He actually invented the word dinosaur. Uh, so really, really, um, yeah, well known, a famous man. And uh, in the uh, event of the proverbial fire, I'm running here, I grab these, everything else can burn, but these are some of the most important fossils that we have. And uh, in fact, you can probably cut all that stuff away while the class starts again. So, um, here we have some of the museum's most important fossils. And, uh, these are the remains of a dinosaur, called Scalidosaurus house and I. And uh, very important because. Um, have their connection to a man called Richard Owen, who's uh, well, mm -hmm. In here, we have some of the museum's most important fossils. Uh, these are bones uh, from a dinosaur, an actual land-living dinosaur uh, called Scalidosaurus harrisoni, um, which was a land-living herbivore, the biggest one here, perhaps four or five meters in length. And there's a, there's a model here of what we used to think it looked like. Um, and uh, a smaller model of um, probably what it more actually looked like. Uh, these bones are quite important um, because of their connection to a man called Sir Richard Owen. So next to the bones uh, is a monograph um, written by, by Richard Owen, and uh, it's open to the page where he actually figures the, these particular bones. Um, so this is one of the first dinosaurs ever to be described. Um, and uh, Richard Owen, yeah, very important, he created the Natural History Museum uh, in London, uh, but also invented the word dinosaur. Uh, so yeah, a really important individual. Uh, a couple of other bits from other specimens, uh, the end of a, a thigh from quite a large individual, a part of the neck um, of, of a smaller uh, individual there, including the bony plates which stuck out of the skin. Uh, in the case here, we have uh, another quite interesting um, specimen. This is a small ichthyosaur, and uh, it was found by um, a, a local collector called Derek Powell. Um, it's not complete, um, but it was prepared using acid, uh, and, uh, and uh, the acid was used to dissolve the limestone surrounding it, and that work was done by Dave Costin. And uh, what's really interesting about this, um, it's a beautiful specimen for a start. You can see an awful lot of detail. But it's really at the back of the, the rib cage uh, where you see some, some interesting features. So underneath the ribs, there are loops and coils of what appear to be uh, internal organs, intestines. Uh, it's actually, of course, fossil poo filling in the, the colon, filling in the part of the intestine of the animal. But actually, it's showing you their structure and shape. And that's really quite interesting. Okay, in this case we have, again, some, some really quite interesting specimens, uh, notably this huge fish, this is a, a fish called the Pedium, uh, and this is a really big specimen, um, preserved in a nodule, so a, a, hard, uh, um, a hard area of stone that formed, uh, almost certainly because the, the fossil fish was there. Um, some bits of the animal were, were actually outside of the, the nodule, so the tail is missing, 
the fins are missing, but yeah, it's a wonderful, wonderful specimen. And then next to it here, uh, a smaller uh, specimen of the same type of fish. Um, this one um, is found by my colleague Chris, and uh, this is Ichthyosaurus aningae, which was only recognised as a, a, a new species uh, a few years ago, um, and of course named after the fabulous Mary Anning. Uh, other things, big plesiosaur um, flipper up here, other fish, crinoids, uh, another more scattered ichthyosaur, again found by a local collector, and uh, And then up here we've got some absolutely stunning ammonites, and this one is one of my favourite ammonites. Um, it's, it's one called Arneoceros, and it's just the nicest specimen that I've ever seen uh, of that type of ammon. In the case behind me, in the case behind me, uh, a few more interesting things. So you can see the other side of the of our skull we saw earlier, but also one of its fins, some of the ribs, some of the vertebrae. Um, and these are casts of actual specimens. Uh, Ichthyosaurus cone of uh, and Excalibosaurus costani, found by a local collector, um, uh, Dave Costin, who is named after. And uh, Excalibosaurus, of course, named after uh, King Arthur's legendary sword. And Excalibosaurus has an extremely long snout and an overbite, um, and that's how the name the name came about. And it's one of my favourite ichthyosaur names. Also here some some beautiful ammonite specimens, uh, and also some some fossils found um, by by notable collectors. Yeah. Yeah. Scrap that. In this case, it's quite quite interesting. Um, we actually have some of Mary Anning's fossils. Uh, these are on loan. Uh, these don't belong to us. Um, what we have is part of the, the jaw structure of a shark, uh, a hibernant shark. So you've got two beautiful sets of teeth. Uh, it was a male shark, so you've actually got the, the two of the head spines that the male sharks had, and then two dorsal fin spines. Um, which actually belong to the same individual. Uh, other things, um, uh, a bone here from an ichthyosaur, uh, discovered by Henry de la Beach, uh, whom my colleague Chris will, will say a little bit about later, um, and then some fossils found by the Philpot sisters, who are contemporaries and friends of, of Mary Anning, and all just you know, really wonderful specimens. And also, just part of the upper jaw of um, Dimorphodon. Now, Dimorphodon was a also, part of the upper jaw um, of an animal called Dimorphodon. Uh, Dimorphodon was a pterosaur, one of the, the flying reptiles. Um, and what I'll do now is I'll show you um, what Dimorphodon would have looked like. Yeah. And also, part of the upper jaw. Um, and also, part of the upper jaw uh, of a creature called Dimorphodon. Uh, Dimorphodon was a pterosaur. So one of the flying reptiles, uh, and what I'll do now is to show you um, what one of those look like, we think, or more or less, when it was alive. So this is Dimorphodon, this is life-size reconstruction, so yeah, it would have looked something like this. Uh, I was the first pterosaur discovered outside Germany, and, uh, and the first British pterosaur, of course, therefore, and also again discovered by, by Mary Ann. And Mary, of course, was an incredible woman, uh, doing the things that she did at the time that she did them. You know, women didn't do these things, uh, working class women especially. 
Um, and you know, it's about time she got the recognition that she truly deserved.